an offense look like with Sama and Eli on the field at the same time? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, probably, you know, we, we know that's 20 personnel, you know, so um, yeah, I, I don't know what that would look like. I, obviously, you know, we'll continue to evolve as those guys continue to evolve with us. But, you know, both those guys are playing really good football right now for us. Did you not do something like that back in the dark ages with Kene? Kene and Brees. And Kene, Kene and Brees, and yes. David. Yeah, at times we've done some 21 personnel or 20 personnel stuff, yeah. Is that under consideration? But uh, Oh, I think everything as we continue uh, to evolve is under consideration for sure. And, you know, especially as those two continue to play good football. And obviously, Cartavius played really well. And, you know, he's kind of worked back himself back from injury. So, you know, you got so many of those guys playing good football. I think you're, you're constantly trying to, you know, match your personnel and, and try to find out the best matchups for you in the football game. But certainly having those guys is always under consideration on the field. What's allowed them to be such good play good playmakers in open space? Is it their gift? Their you answer the question. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think both those guys, the, the one thing those two have is they've got elite speed and they've got the ability to really run. And, you know, I think as the evolution of their being, you know, Eli being comfortable and kind of getting back to full strength and obviously Cartavius growing or, uh, you know, Abu growing every each week, I, I feel both of those guys, you know, feel a lot more confident too to be able to use their speed in space. So um, I just think you see those guys growing by the week right now. And, and obviously that's big and, and, but they can really run. And, and it showed up at times on Saturday because the group we played last Saturday could really run. Coach, you get uh, James, or uh, sorry, Jake Remsburg back uh, this Saturday. What's yeah. the feeling uh, to finally get him eligible? Yeah, I, I just think, you know, obviously we all think the world of Jake. And, you know, he's been such a great senior human in our football program over the test of time and has overcome multiple obstacles. You know, I mean, every injury in the book during his career and then obviously um, the situation that happened this past spring. But Jake's handled everything like first class. And, you know, he's always been resilient and tough. And so just to get somebody with his veteranness back in our football program, and, you know, he's been with us obviously over the course of the last six, seven weeks, but just back in practicing and, and kind of intentful where he can help us in the football game. Um, we're excited to have Jake back. For a guy who hasn't really been healthy enough to see the field in a year and a half, um, not how you understand that, that he hasn't been there, but is there any pitch count or snap management that you have to utilize on Saturday to prevent him from overworking himself? Yeah, you know, I, I think, again, just got to be smart. And, and, you know, where's he fit? What's it look like? You know, obviously that line starting to play good football. And, you know, I, I think Jake is a guy that can play multiple positions for us. So, you know, I, I think just having him back, you know, in the offensive room, back, you know, getting ready to prepare for a football game, I think just even that veteranness is huge for our football team. What's a guy like Darian Porter, switch positions, play special teams, yeah. what's he do? for your team and for your locker room that seems like a guy that just wants to go on the field. Yeah, and, and really a guy that, you know, has been, if you look at our success this season, I mean, every win he's had a huge play or plays in the game. And, you know, he's battled injury. I mean, you know, there's about a three week stretch where we really didn't have Darian. And I, I thought that really hurt us. And, you know, I thought it hurt us on defense, you know, just because he was had earned the right to be that third corner and was really playing great football. And then obviously we certainly felt the effects on special teams just without him being in there. So Darian's one of those young men in our program. And, you know, again, he's always done what's best for the program. But what I was so excited coming into the season is just how great a football he was beginning to play on the defensive side of the football. And I still think his ceiling is extremely high. And I don't think he's anywhere close to what we've seen what he can impact the game for us, especially on the defensive side. So I think him staying healthy right now, really kind of getting back into the groove um, on the defensive side of the football equal to special teams. He's a huge asset. And again, I think his career has got a chance to be really, really special, um, you know, for the rest of the season and beyond. What did you think of your guys' tackling throughout the game on Saturday? Yeah, it was, and, and I, I'm sure Coach Haycock would have said this. It, it's got to be better. Um, you know, there were times where I didn't think we tackled great. Um, now, you also have to tip your hat to who you're tackling. And, you know, you're talking about a team that's got elite team speed and, and really talented players. Um, yeah, I thought there were times, a couple, 
third and one, fourth and one, some big time plays where we really tackled well. And then there were times we just didn't tackle as good as we need to. So um, continues to be a focus for us on, on the defensive side of the football. Need to be better. Um, but again, I think you, you know globally, there's gaps we all want to fill in. And I think tackling better is certainly something we've got to continue to do a better job of. Yeah, and, and again, I, I think the word you just use is veteran. You know, I, I think when you look at the game of who's tackling really well, you know, it's Bo and, you know, it's it's Gary and, you know, the, those veteran football players are tackling well. Um, you know, I, again, I just think for us, it's part of the youth process. It's it's knowing where your help is on the defensive side of the football. It's knowing the angle that if you are going to miss, where you want to miss at. Um, and so I think just all those things are part of our growing process, especially on that side of the ball right now. Obviously, you guys haven't had it easy on the road, especially in your most recent matchup. What is the adjustment? How does this team prepare for to take on the road again? Yeah, I mean, winning football games in college football, especially on the road and at any level, is hard. And you know, you, there's got to be a great sense of maturity. There's got to you have to be able to play with great precision and detail. Um, and you know, I, I would say we haven't done a great job of that over the course of the last, you know, geez, I'd say the last year and a half, to be honest with you. And you know, when you look at when we've been really special here and really good football teams, we've been elite on the road. We've had the ability to play great on the road, and you know, those are things that that part of the growth process, I think, of this team. What's it take to win on the road? What's it take to win in hostile environments? This is uh, another really special place to play college football, and so you know, the opportunity to go play in this kind of environment against this type of team, um, you know, it, it'll show its maturity. Can we learn and grow and continue to play the level we need to play on the road? So great challenge for us, for sure. Matt, after having the opportunity to look at the film or video, I guess, whatever we want to call it, of the game, can you expand a little bit on Rocco's decision making, particularly on the Ford and three that you referenced <clears throat> after the game? And, yeah. And just his growth in terms of feel for the game. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's a couple plays that he makes in the game or doesn't make as well in the game. You know, there's a couple balls downfield that he throws in, you know, again, elite secondary. You know, we this, that, that was back-to-back -back weeks, and we're going to face another really good one this week where you played top elite talent in the secondary. And when you make decisions to push the ball down the field at times, it's it's got to be either us or nobody at times, and you got to give the receiver a great chance to be successful. And there's a couple even incompletions that I was really proud of him because, man, where that ball's thrown, it's either going to be us or it's going to be nobody. Um, I, I think, you, you know, I talked about it after the game. I think that fourth and three play and then the second and three play on the goal line, you know, both are, you know, the fourth and three is it's, it's the fifth option that he gets to. And what's ironic is we actually ran the exact same play against TCU the year before, and he threw an interception. It was a pick six. Same play. And his ability to go through the progression, the ability for him to, you know, work through it and to get there, um, I just thought it was huge. And, you know, we talked about it in the team meeting on Sunday. And then obviously then the second and three play where it's a little bit of a scramble. And again, you don't always want to throw the ball down there, you know, unless it's a situation that's perfect. But, you know, his ability to kind of extend the play a little bit and certainly throw the perfect ball that if you're going to throw it back shoulder ball to Easton, um, it's a really great decision. So I think evolution growing and, and he needs to know that. And I think, you know, that's what, you know, as we continue to, to grow forward, I think he he is really passionate about making the right decisions. You know, quarterbacks not making about every throw. It's not. It's about making the right decisions on every throw. And I think you see the evolution of that really starting to happen for Rocco. And you see him being really intentful and purposeful about that. So, um, you know, for me to see corrections even from a year ago to game to game, I think there's some things that were really positive from Rocco's performance. We saw Malik make a tackle in what was potentially a game changing situation. So I'm getting his first pick. Yeah. What's his importance for the defense, you know, now that he's healthy enough to be back, back out there again? Yeah, and again, I, I probably a lot like like I talked about Darian. You know, I, I think Malik is one of those guys that is he he is an elite talent, and he's a really special football player. And 
you know, I, I think for us, you know, that guy's a, you know, when I talk about A players making A plays, he's an A player for us. And, you know, I, I think you, you saw his impact Saturday. I mean, his ability to stop the run in the boundary, his ability to be a physical tackler, his, his length and size and ability to run and cover people into the boundary. We haven't had a whole lot of boundary safeties that have had that skill set, and he certainly has got all those tools. And again, his his spring, his fall camp, you would have come out and said, man, this guy's ready to just explode onto the scene. And I really thought he had a great start to the season. I, it's fr it was frustrating for him, you know, gets dinged up. Not having him for a couple of weeks, I think certainly, um, you know, wasn't the best thing, but I, I will say how he handled it. You know, I thought he was a great leader while he wasn't playing. I think even his ability to kind of slow the game down and still get himself better um, and then come back and really play a special game last Saturday, um, that was big, and we'll need him to continue to progress forward for us to be a great team. Coach, as you look ahead to your guys' big picture goals this season, what's the importance of being able to start stacking some wins and getting a winning streak going, something you haven't been able to, to accomplish yet this year? Um, you know, I, I think the, the reality is it's, it's everybody in college football, 18 to 22 year old young men and their vision of how do I get better one day at a time. And that stuff's all easy to sit up here and say, um, it's really, really hard to do. But the teams, you know, in two months that you're going to be talking about had a great season or man, they had the chance to re reach their full potential. They're the ones that have the ability to consistently week in and week out get better. And, you know, in this conference, this is, you know, we're not like other conferences. This is every game you better come and show up because there's really good football teams that are you better you better play your A game or you're going to get beat. And so I think on top of that, this conference challenges you and it makes you be your absolute best because if you're not, you're going to get yourself beat. So I, I think all that said, it, it takes, you know, great leadership and it takes great motivation to have the ability to get better every every day and every week. And it's easy to say it's really hard to do it. You've talked a lot about the growth that you feel like this team has made in a lot of areas this season. Can you explain the type of growth that you feel like they've made in taking it one day at a time, one week at a time, and not looking ahead at mm. what's down the road three weeks from now? I think sometimes when you're young, honestly, I, I think that you're just trying to you're just trying to like breathe honestly on a day in day out basis. I mean, this whole process is hard. Um, man, you got school, you've got you got football, you know, you're being asked to play at a consistent level. Um, man, you got to get up, you got to eat breakfast, you got to still lift weights. Like that whole process is hard enough. So I think sometimes being young is, is you know, a benefit because you're just trying to figure out how do I get through the day the next day and I'm not really worried about you know this game or this stat or this this it's just trying to get better one day at a time and I I think that's one of the things that's been really enjoyable about this group is man there's a man there's a sense of urgency they're so excited to be at practice they're ready to come to work every day and I also give a lot of credit to our seniors you know we we've got just such a great group of senior leadership that man there's no individual um, aspirations that they're chasing they're chasing how do we be the best team and how do I be the best senior leader and I think you know that mix has certainly been enjoyable so far this year for this football team for sure Matt what's unique about uh, preparing for a new conference bow that you don't have film on how they played you in the past and secondly what's What's made Cincinnati's ground game so good? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's certainly it, it's a unique challenge. You know, even preparing for all three phases of the game this week, it's like, oh, it, it kind of like, you know, it, it was. Uh, it's just different. But you know, I, first of all, you know, Scott Satterfield, the head coach at Cincinnati, and I are are really great friends. We were together at Toledo. Um, and probably one of my great mentors. He's had a huge impact on me as a just a person, him and his family, and certainly as a football coach. And so I think that aspect of it, you know what you're getting into. And Scott's going to run the football. I mean, he you look at his career, um, one of the best coaches in college football with the consistency of win percentage, how his teams win. They run the ball. They're tough. And, you know, from App State to certainly Louisville to where he's been at, um, you know, now at, at certainly Cincinnati. And I just think, you know, number one, they know what their answers are in the running game. They know how to adjust within the in the game. 
Um, they're very consistent with what they want to do. Um, he's always had a great quarterback that can be a dual threat. You know, as soon as you stop the tailback, now all of a sudden the running back's a, a true threat in the game. And so, you know, Scott does an incredible job of putting his players in great position to be successful. So it'll be a great challenge for us defensively. They're going to run the football and they're going to challenge you on every play. And, and, you know, he's always had a really great offensive line. And certainly Cincinnati has that as well. What's the difference, if there is one, on getting better from a moment like Ohio last month that's a low point versus the last, what, three weeks where the growth is obvious yeah. and now you're coming off, I won't call it a high point, but success. Is there a difference? Well, I think it's just handling it all, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I believe it's easier to handle failure than it is to handle success, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, I, I think if you've looked over the course of time, you know, I feel like our kids have always had the ability to respond when it hasn't gone well. Um, and, and, you know, I think the neat thing for this team is we're nowhere close to where we want to be or we believe we've got the ability to be. And so even with a win, there's just so much teaching going on right now. There's so much growth that still needs to happen. And I think we've got such good football kids that they understand, hey, yeah, we maybe got the result we wanted, but there are some things fundamentally and from a standard standpoint in all three phases of the game, we just got to be better. And, you know, I, I, again, that takes humility. You know, I got to start with your coaching staff and not believe, man, you got the win, all is great, because it's not. Um, and I think equally, you know, it's got to resonate with our kids and they've got to have the same belief system. But I do think a little bit of handling success through the season, failure through the season I think all those those things have allowed us to really grow and maybe see where we did it good and where we weren't as good as we needed to be at times so um, you know another great challenge in my opinion to grow forward this week for all of us since you are going back home um, and since obviously Cincinnati Ohio is a hotbed one of the handful of hotbeds um, for college football yeah. players in the country will you go out and on Friday nights you or your staff, and I think I know your thoughts yeah. on this, but yeah. you or your staff go out on Friday nights we, and just show your brand at least? We, we won't. And, you know, I, I think, uh, number one, it's it's a tough situation just because it's our, such an early game, you know. And, you know, we won't get in there till late. And, you know, obviously we've got to get up and, and get ready to go early. But, um, you know, I think just the fact that Cincinnati coming into the league is, is obviously great for our league because I think – Twofold. Number one, what a what a great football program that brings into this conference of tough, competitive, has played at an elite level um, consistently through the years, no matter what conference they've been in. And number two, it is an area for us that you know Midwest recruiting, and another area for us that we can continue to you know at least show kids, hey, we're playing at close to you. So I think all those things are positive for us. You guys ever go out on Friday nights? It, it, it's rare. Um, it's rare. You know, I, I feel like there's just such a value for us to be around our kids and, you know, continue the preparation process for us. Coach, the run game, how much is that has been Eli, the veteran in there and to have him at his healthiest these last couple of games, what really has it meant to this run game, Eli just being the veteran? In yeah, there? I, I think Eli's been huge for us. I mean, you know, I, I and, and again, you, your pride comes in coaching when you see growth and you know Eli if if you asked him really tough season last year you know things were not you know not his best he would tell you you know I go back to that Kansas game a year ago I don't know what that's game like four or five and you know he kind of gets an opportunity doesn't play his best game and it's then it's a little bit of a man it, it wasn't good for a couple of weeks and you know he really responded about the second to last week of the season I think it's a Texas Tech game and you know I think in our world today, it's easy for kids to not get what you want, have not success, get in the transfer portal, go find a new home, and go do it somewhere else. And for that young man to come back to say, man, I'm going to do everything in my power to be my best, and that's really what he did. He had an incredible spring, had an incredible summer, physically totally changed where he was, mentally took a huge step forward. And to watch him now get the fruits of that labor, 
that's the great reward of it. And, you know, I think for our kids to see that, for the young men to see kind of where he was a year ago to where he is now, um, I think that's huge. And, and uh, honestly, if we're going to continue to sustain success in this program, we got to win with Eli Sanders. We got to win with young men growing through hard things. And so we're really proud of Eli. I know I am as the head football coach. I know our staff is, and I do think he's been a, he's been a huge spark for us and our football team for sure, especially in that running back room that's so young. Uh, Matt, just what's allowed the defense to kind of have, have a nose for the football as far as interceptions are concerned? Uh, you're second in the Big 12 in, in picks right now. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm certainly glad last Saturday happened, you know, because, you know, we we're kind of – kind of milling around a little bit in, in that area. But I, obviously, Saturday helped us a bunch. But I, I, I think the tribute there has certainly got to be to that secondary. I mean, you got a lot of guys, veteran. You know, Jeremiah's played really good football um, this season for us. You know, Bo is, you know, man, Bo is the anchor of our football team. I mean, the play he makes on Saturday night down here where he wins the 50-50 ball, we may not win that game if that play doesn't get made. And I mean, he literally, you know, demands us win the game. And so, um, and you talk about what TJ's meant to us, and you certainly talk about Malik. And, you know, I, I just think that secondary, they're veteran players. They've been there. They've done that. And for those guys to come up in those huge moments as this young team starts to just continue to grow underneath them, I think it's huge. And those guys have been, those guys have been awesome. I mean, TJ's, TJ's interception at home against Okie State to, to finish the game. Those guys have made the plays in the moment to help us win the football games. And that's what you need. That's team football. The veterans have to show the young guys what it looks like and win in those moments. And we're really fortunate because those guys have done a great job for us. All right, guys, thank you.